Next, let's have a look at how you can fit your topic model in R and how you can validate the result of your topic modeling. The R code for filling topic models is actually really, really simple. So if I would just give you the R code, this would probably be the shortest workshop ever. Um, if you use the library topic models and if you use Quantida to create a document feature matrix, um, there are only two real steps to fitting an LDA model. First, you need to convert the Quantida document feature matrix to a, a topic models a document term matrix, and then you run the LDA function. Um, you should always specify the number of um, topics, the K, and we suggest generally also specifying the, the method, the GIP sampling. We'll talk more about that later. And as I explained earlier, it's a good idea to take a lower alpha than the default value in the algorithm. Finally, you see that we set the seeds. Um, this sets the random seed. That means that if you run the same code a number of times, you will get the same results. Since LDA is, um, uh, is not a deterministic algorithm, uh, if you don't do this and you run exactly the same uh, topic model of exactly the same data, you will get different results every time, if only because you might get what used to be topic 3 and topic 7 and the other way around. So once you fit your LDA model, you can um, have a look at the results. The first thing people generally do is look at the top terms. This gives you the D5 or 10 or whatever you fill in um, best fitting terms for each topic. This gives you a good first estimate of what the topic is actually about. Rather than the discrete top five, you can also ask for the full scores, the posterior um, distribution of the um, uh, topic over terms. So you can actually see as a sort of as a probability, as a percentage, how strongly each term fits in each topic. And you can get the same score for the documents. So this will tell you how strongly each document scores for each topic. Especially the last one is really important because, um, as I said, you should really um, have a look at the documents in many cases to understand what the topic is about, but also because we want to do a substantive analysis of the results of your topic modeling. This is normally what you are after because you want to see which of your documents contain what topics, and that is exactly what this will give you. So every time I talk about automatic text analysis, I stress that you need to validate the text, right? Uh, whatever you do something, you need to validate it. For a dictionary or a supervised machine learning model, that makes sort of sense, right? If you have claimed that you have a dictionary to measure um, news about the economy, um, you can code yourself whether the news is indeed about the economy and you can see whether the, the dictionary found the same articles that you found. Or if you want to do it a little bit better, you, you have uh, multiple experts to, to code a gold standard data set and you compare it to the gold standards. However, topic models by their very nature are unsupervised. You don't tell them what a topic is, you don't tell them what you're after, you just ask the computer to find patterns. So what does validity mean in that setting, right? So what does it mean that you, you measure what you claim to measure if you have an unsupervised setting where you don't actually ask the computer to measure something, you just ask him to find patterns. So in general, there's three ways to go about this. One, and um, that is probably the worst option, but the one that you will see most in the wilds, is um, to just limit yourself to face validity. Um, in any case, you should always check the face validity of, of any model, and that includes a, a topic model. Um, but in topic modeling, that's usually done um, by uh, inspecting and presenting the top terms, um, which is a good start. Um, and I argue you should always, always uh, include the top documents. Yeah, so look at which documents are actually representative for a certain topic, because that is often more informative than the terms, because the terms don't have contexts, um, and the, the meaning of a word can, can quite easily change depending on context and it's easy to misunderstand a topic just from looking at the top terms. It is also very instructive to look at edge cases. So if you see that there's a number of documents that contain, for example, both the Cold War and the nuclear proliferation frame, it is interesting to look at those documents to understand uh, what the difference is between those two topics and how those two topics uh, flow into each other or uh, are connected with each other. The second strategy of validation is the, to use the same strategy as you would use for a dictionary analysis and go for the concurrent validity, right? So um, if you have something that you uh, know or assume to be correct, uh, which often means uh, expert coding, right? So a, a data set that you coded manually somehow, you want to see whether your topic model or some of the topics from your topic model reproduce those results. So if you are looking for economic news and one of your, your topics from your topic model is economic news, you can see whether the topics that score highly, sorry, the documents that score highly on that topic are also documents that are coded with economy by the experts. Now, 
if this works out, that's fantastic. Um, that would be great, and you don't have to do coding. The problem is, of course, we never told the computer to look for economic news. We never told him what a topic is or what we mean when we when we call something a topic. So the chance that whatever the computer comes up with is actually exactly uh, the thing that you you coded with your your um, with your fancy code book and your expert codings and everything is really low. Um, I've never really seen it happen. You see that there might be correlation between the two, but usually the correlation is moderate at best. So if you are really looking for something specifically like economic news or like nuclear technology and you want to identify those those documents it is very often not the best strategy to use a topic model because then you have inherently have a supervised question so if you treat the topic model as a truly unsupervised or explorative tool um, you obviously can't say that you measure what you claim to measure because you don't know what you're measuring, right? You're, you're exploring here, you're asking the computer to find patterns. You don't know what those patterns are because if you knew what those patterns are, it wouldn't be unsupervised anymore. So what do you do? Um, you can look at the construct validity and uh, you can see whether the topics are cohesive. So the topics um, uh, have a, a coherence, um, make and uh, make sense. They, they have a, they have a cohesive meaning to them, and where they are distinctive, right? That you can um, truly distinguish one topic from the other. And you sort of do this, of course, when you're inspecting the top terms. But Chang et al. have written a very nice paper called "Reading Tea Leaves: How Humans Interpret Topic Models." in which they um, introduce a number of, of experiments you can do, a sort of like crowd coding experiments where you show people a number of words. And for example, four would be selected from one topic and the fifth would be selected from another topic. If the human can consistently pick out the, the fifth topic and pick the odd one out, then apparently that topic is coherent. Um, if they can't pick it out, then it's not a coherent topic. And they have a similar experiment for the distinctiveness. What is interesting, um, one of their results is that actually the mathematical um, uh, uh, sort of the, the, the perplexity based models, so that the models that are that score really well on the, the mathematical goodness of fits are often not the ones that score really well on human interpretation of cohesiveness and distinctiveness. And so that's an interesting message to take home that the perplexity graph isn't always the, the best indicator of what is a good topic model.